Okay, so the um, oxygen is a diatomic element. So let's do our accounting of how many valence electrons are in oxygen. So we'll draw atom, number of valence electrons. So the atom is oxygen. Now, obviously, this is not completely necessary. I'm just doing it to show you how I'm thinking it through. In larger molecules, you'll have a bunch of atoms listed here and then valence electrons. If you have a formal charge, like you do in a polyatomic ion, if it's a plus charge, you subtract electrons. If it's a negative charge, you add the same number of electrons as the charge. You'll see that later when we do phosphate. So the number of valence electrons. Oxygen is a chalcogen. It's in group 16. Therefore, how many valence electrons? Six, six valence electrons. So we're going to put six times two. Therefore, oxygen has 12 valence electrons. Let's draw two oxygen atoms with a bond between them. Yeah. And we're going to do this systematically. We're going to start off by putting one bond between no. the two oxygen atoms. That uses up two electrons already. So now we have ten electrons that have to be scattered around the rest of the molecule. So we're going to go two, four, six, eight, ten. Let's see if that works. That uses up all 12 electrons, but we, there's something slightly disturbing in this diagram. It's that you have more on one side than you do on the other. It's not symmetrical, so it's likely to have some kind of formal charge or something that's going to be is going to come up. But we're going to look, we're going to analyze it and see what we can do to change it and make it better. Um, so let's look at the octets. The left oxygen atom and the right oxygen atom. The left oxygen atom has two, four, six, eight electrons, so its octet requirement is fulfilled. But the right one has only two, four, six, so it does not have a fulfilled octet. As for the charge, the left oxygen atom wants to possess six electrons, and it possesses two, four, six plus one, giving you seven electrons. Therefore, it's going to have a negative charge of one. It's got one more electron than it wants. So it's got a formal charge. It's not necessarily wrong, but it. it um, might be able to do better. The right oxygen atom has two, four, plus one, five electrons in its possession, so it's going to have a former charge of plus one. So it doesn't have uh, a neutral um, neutral charge. And, and also, oxygen typically likes to have a negative charge. It'll accommodate a negative charge more easily than it does a positive charge usually. Let's see if we can improve on the diagram. So I'm going to take this lone pair Following the recommendation of the sixth rule I gave you, I'm going to turn it into a bonding pair. So now the new diagram will look like this. It's going to be a double bond between the two oxygen atoms, and all the remaining lone pairs are still there. Now let's check the octet rule for oxygen. And we see that the left oxygen atom possesses two, four, six, eight. <coughs> Remember, bonding pairs still count for two. So the left oxygen atom is satisfied with its uh, number of electrons. Whoa. The right oxygen atom, just hold the question for a second, same thing, it, has, it possesses eight. As for the charge, the left oxygen atom has two, four, remember bonding pairs count for one, five, six. Oxygen has six valence electrons, so it likes to accommodate six valence elect six electrons for charge consideration. And the right oxygen, same thing. So this is the actual um, Lewis structure of diatomic oxygen. It's got two, uh, two lone pairs on each oxygen atom, and it's got a double bond. And actual experiments have shown that this is the structure of, of the oxygen molecule. Stop it there.